I don't know about you, but actually his intervention in politics right now is much needed. A man who at one point was really focusing on technology and innovations and science and tech now sees himself, I think, as very much the protector of the free world, the defender of free speech. Ever since he's taken over X and tried to clean up that platform, rid it of all of the bots and try and make sure that it becomes the fora, the marketplace where we can all share information, where we can trade facts and opinions and discuss the state of the world, he's seen repeatedly this effort being shut down, especially in Western countries. He has seen the EU try and take him to task on repeated occasions, dealing, like I've said already, um, you know, we're trying to close close down the way we exchange information rather than, frankly, dealing with the platforms that are responsible for the nefarious acts being committed. You know, rather than going after paedophilia and uh, the sale of drugs and weapons, instead they just want to stop us talking about it. And uh, it was amazing. I don't know if you saw his interview with Donald Trump the other day. Um, uh, it started 45 minutes late because someone had tried to hack it. Perhaps Thierry Breton himself was there, hacking away at his computer keyboard, desperately trying to make sure that interview didn't take place. But why? Why is everybody trying to silence a former president and the richest man in the world from having a chit chat? Surely that is stuff that we need to hear. I had uh, said to him when he started getting into politics at the beginning of, I think it was 22, uh, 2022, he, you know, he started getting into it because... Biden had not invited Tesla to the White House, but invited all the other electric car manufacturers and had actually introduced GM as the premier electric car manufacturer. And by that stage, Tesla had built already over a million cars that year. And so Elon was very upset and he started getting into it, into politics, started saying things. And I did say to him at the time, you know, you realize you're getting into politics. Uh, this is dangerous. These people kill you. They, they don't play around. This is not... Uh, you know, they don't get, uh, they're not happy if you lose your money. They, these people kill you. So I said to him, make sure you've got very good guards, uh, you know, and very good people who check who your guards are and very people, good people who check who the check, who check the people who your guards are and so on. You know what I mean? So, so that they are properly vetted, you know. And he said, don't worry, he has. And I know for a fact that he has up to 30 personal guards at this time. Incredible guys, I know them. Good. Well, we, we need him to be protected because he really is a, an extremely strong and important voice right now who we feel is protecting us. How much do you think his upbringing in South Africa has shaped his worldview? It sounds to me like this is a, this is a man who actually wants to make a wonderful world, to quote Louis yes. Armstrong, that he's a big yes. dreamer, that he's got huge ambitions yes, for yes. our planet. Oh, a big dreamer. Very big dreamer, you know, you, you know, Sometimes as a dad, I'd, we have to say to him, you know, like, uh, okay, it might be possible, but, you know, a bit of a dreamer. And uh, But on the other hand, of course, he's taken all these ideas and turned them into reality. And, uh, you know, I think of myself as an electrical engineer. I used to think about electric cars. I used to think of, I used to build rockets as a child. I never thought I could take it any further than that, but he seemed to think bigger. And uh, all my children are like that. Uh, you know, my other son is the same. And so... I'm very happy. I'm, it's wonderful. Uh, and my advice to people is listen to to Elon. And when he told this uh, Starmer character, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is that he told him, I'd say to Starmer, you know, look, you, you, you're getting into a deeper swimming pool here, my friend. I mean, it's interesting, actually, because one thing that Elon had said about our country uh, when things looked pretty hairy and we had riots on our streets and we looked like a fractured society now, things are calming down and I hope we can go back to the wonderful, integrated, calm and peaceful Britain that uh, I think at one point we were sort of famous around the world for being. But he said, you know, it looks like the UK is going into civil war and people said, oh, that's terrible, you can't say that, that's inflammatory. But I wonder if he looked at what was going on and, you know, having been brought up, in South Africa, which itself has been riven by all sorts yes. of conflicts and, 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 and societal divisions, that this is actually yes. something close to his heart that he definitely does not want to see happen. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. He would not want to see that, of course not. But he's stating a simple fact. So, I mean, it's not as though uh, he made anything up. To anyone looking at England from the outside now, I can tell you, we had a lot of problems in South Africa 
And uh, we never had anything like what you're having. We had a few odd situations, maybe once or twice when some malls or something were damaged, but nothing, nothing like what is going on there. And, and so anyone who looks at the situation then one has to feel very sorry for the, for the English people. Uh, I feel very sorry for them. I grew up in England uh, for a few years, and I know nearly all the towns, I, uh, London, Gloucester, Bristol, Liverpool, I've been to, lived in all those places. You lived and, in Gloucester? I'm from Gloucester. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I like Gloucester. I like the weather there. It was very good weather there. The weather was quite good there, I seem to recall. And, and it was uh, yeah, very, very nice people. And uh, Cheltenham and so on. And, uh, yeah, but um, the... Uh, you know, the situation there, I think the English people have been given a really raw deal. Not to say that other European countries haven't also perhaps been given or being given a very raw deal. I've got nothing against these people who come from the desert countries or whatever they are, or wherever they come from. I mean, but, you know, they are quite different to the people that they are going to, uh, you know, live with. And I read last week i think it was that 17 out of 23 major cities have are run by muslims i'm not to say there's anything wrong with that i don't know but it just worries me because i think well you know isn't that england isn't that england i mean i don't and then i saw i'm not saying familiar with with that specific t- uh, uh, statistic I, I read that i read that uh, well in fact uh, a day ago uh, about a day ago i saw uh, that it was pakistan's national independence day or something and the, I think it was the mayor of Leeds is a is a Muslim guy, and I that's fine, I suppose. But he raised the Muslim flag over Leeds. I mean, the Pakistani flag over Leeds. It's kind of weird, you know. It's kind of, I mean, I don't think you could do that in those countries, and you know, go there and become the Englishman who becomes the mayor of uh, whatever the place is called, and and then you uh, raise the British flag or, or whatever. Over yeah, the I mean, city. I mean, people I would say. So. I mean, I, I agree with you. Look, as someone who's actually gone and worked in Pakistan, I think if I went to sort of run to be the mayor of Karachi, <laughs> I probably wouldn't yeah. go down very well. Um, yeah. But uh, but you know, we yeah. I mean, we, we have to have big conversations in this country and try and answer some very difficult and taboo questions. And it seems to me that that is something that Elon is actually encouraging when he took over X. Yes. And what some people see is this is dangerous. This is provoking conflict. You know you. You can't say that because people might get upset or offended or this is going to increase division and the algorithms that actually perhaps what he wants to do is the opposite and allow people the opportunity to exchange well, course, information freely and solve their problems. Yes, absolutely no intention to cause difficulty, but at the same time to make an observation that, uh, you know, if you see somebody standing at the very edge of a cliff, you might make the observation, uh, don't stand too close, you're going to fall off. Uh, that's not uh, that's being helpful actually uh, 